Dragon Ball is probably the most famous anime on planet Earth. It got that title for a long list of reasons, but towards the top of that list is, without a doubt, its iconic transformations. A person who hasn't seen one single second of Dragon Ball still has a decent chance of knowing what a Super Saiyan is, you know? It's pretty much ingrained into the identity of pop culture at this point, so I figure why not take a deep look into every Saiyan transformation and rank all 30 of them from worst to best. Now I know what some of you are thinking, Awaken, there are not 32 forms in Dragon Ball, and you'd be right, but there are 32 individual times where a Saiyan transforms, kinda. I'm not ranking each form, mostly because that's been done to death already, and my video would not add anything to all the other dozens of videos that's been done on that topic. So if you're still confused, think about it this way. Goku's original Super Saiyan transformation will be ranked somewhere on this list, but so will Vegeta's original Super Saiyan transformation. We're more so taking a look at the moment itself, not so much the form. If you're still lost, you'll figure it out as the video goes on. Now obviously this video is very, very subjective, but in case you're curious about my personal ranking criteria, here's what I'm using. Presentation. Obviously it has to look cool. Significance, how significant or important the transformation is to that character. And last, impact, how impactful was that transformation on the story going forward? Did it win its respective fight? Did it lose? Did it do anything? All that kind of stuff. So that's my criteria out the way here, are the ranking rules. It's not literally going to be every single sand transformation because this video would be unreasonably long and I just don't see the point in that. So it's only going to be the very first time that character did the transformation. I thought about maybe just picking like my favorite transformation for example like my favorite time Goku turns to Super Saiyan but I feel like that adds another thick layer of subjectivity to an already pretty subjective video so I ruled against that. Second rule these are all canon transformations except for GT. Look, Super Saiyan 4 is too iconic of a transformation and a form for it to be left off this ranking. So if you have beef with that, my bad, that's tough, but just deal with it because it's my list, so yeah. But other than GT, that eliminates all movie transformations, all video game only transformations, any of those cool Dragon Ball hero transformations, while sometimes dope on, on the fan service side, won't be here. Sorry, maybe they'll get a separate video in the future, but yeah, nah, they just not coming in. Also, I'm not gonna do any Ozaru forms because I just don't want to if I'm being quite honest. I don't think any of those are really cool. So, also these are only Saiyan exclusive transformations. I know that feels a little self-explanatory given the title of the video, but I bring that up to say that Ultra Instinct will not be in this ranking simply for the fact that if you're not a Saiyan, you can still do Ultra Instinct, so it doesn't really make sense for it to be in this ranking. If you want to see that, sorry, it's not here. It's just strictly based off of technicality. And final rule, no weird in-between transformations like Super Saiyan Ascended and Super Vegeta. That, that stuff just tedious and I'm not doing it. With the exception of like Super Saiyan Blue of all of Vegeta, as some people consider that like an in-between transformation, but there's enough substance there for me to talk about it on the entry, and I think it's cool enough to the point where, yeah, it probably deserves a spot in this ranking. A big reason why I'm not doing those in-between forms is because they don't last long and there's not really much to say about them, so they pretty much just fill up towards like the bottom of the list and no one really wants to see that, so yeah. And coming in as an honorable mention, fusions will in fact be ranked on the list, aka, you know, when a fused Saiyan character transforms, but Gogeta Super Saiyan 4 will not be on this list. Again, not really making the list based off of technicality because Goku and Vegeta, when they fused and made Gogeta, I didn't really remember this, but looking back on it, I mean, this happens. He's already Super Saiyan 4 as a result of the fusion. He doesn't actually transform into a Super Saiyan 4. So, yeah, he's not on the list. I didn't forget him. He just didn't make it again because of a technicality. So, with that super long-winded intro out the way, let's get into the video. Ranking every single time a Saiyan transformed in Dragon Ball. So at number 32, 
good old Universe 6 Saiyans. They're, they're, they're all towards the bottom. Actually, no, they're not. That's not true. I'll get to that later. We have Khalifa's her Super Saiyan 2 transformation. There's not really much to say here. It's boring and pointless. It was like, ooh, cool. She 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 did a Super Saiyan 2 transformation in the Tournament of Power. That, that, that's certainly something. So she gets the worst spot. Congrats. At number 31, we have Khalifa Super Saiyan 1 transformation. Now, granted, I do have it back to back, you know what I'm saying? Super Saiyan 2 being the worst and then this being second worst, but I definitely have a lot more praise for the Super Saiyan 1 transformation than the Super Saiyan 2 transformation. I don't know. In the moment, I found it more interesting seeing Kaba try to explain how to turn into a Super Saiyan, even with like, you know, the iconic meme tingling in the back thing. Even if that was the result of it, it was still kind of interesting watching a Super Saiyan or watching a Saiyan discover how to become a Super Saiyan. I don't know. I had a little soft spot for it. Number 30, we have Kefla Super Saiyan 1 transformation. Hot take, not really the biggest fan of Fuse characters like some other people who are fans of Dragon Ball, which, I mean, that's fine. Difference in opinion, totally fine. Totally respect all opinions. Yeah, just not really my thing. So when I saw this, I kind of rolled my eyes at it. Presentation's cool, I guess, but I was like, ah, oh, boy, another Fuse character. And isn't it funny how everyone makes this big deal about, like, Oh yeah, man, it's the morphing of the two personalities, but keep the buck, keep the buck. Every Fuse character has the exact same personality. They're just some cocky Saiyan strong person now. That's it. I just, I've never seen a difference in any Fuse form ever from Gotenks, Vegito, Gogeta, Kefla. They're all the same, but whatever, it's fine. So yeah, that comes in at 30. <laughs> At 29, we have Kel. Now, she's really low in the grand scheme of this ranking, but I didn't really hate the concept of female Broly like a bunch of other people did. Something about like the idea of the whole Super Saiyan, legendary Super Saiyan mythos existing in all universes where Saiyans exist, I kind of enjoyed that, you know what I'm saying? Now, was it executed that well? No, not really, but I enjoyed it in theory and concept, so it gets the nice little 29 spot here. I want to do that Super Saiyan thing that makes your hair look funny. Huh? You can go Super Saiyan if you want to, but I think you'll need to wait till you're a bit old. What? <laughs> At 28, we have Goten's Super Saiyan transformation. So a big gripe that a lot of people had with Universe 6 Saiyans is they felt like them becoming Super Saiyan was a little bit too easy. They feel like, hey, you're undermining the transformation and you're undermining all the blood, sweat, and tears our legacy characters put into this. But like, I never see anyone ever complain about how easy Goten and Kid Trunks achieve Super Saiyan. And I feel like that's a little unfair. And that could have something to do with Kid Trunks and Goten just being all around more likable characters. But it feels like when people are talking about Universe 6 Saiyans, they're like, oh, they got everything so easy. They just, they just got the transformations handed to them. But when we're talking about Goten and Kid Trunks, it's like, oh, they have so much potential. Look how easily they just turn into these Super Saiyans. And I don't really know how I feel about that. Like, I feel like that's a true double standard, but whatever. Two. So, what are you going to do about it? Uh, guess I'll go super. Huh? Yeah! Oh. <laughs> At number 27, we have Kid Trunks' Super Saiyan transformation. He comes in right above Gosen just for the simple fact that, like, it's a little bit more believable. Like, I can believe that Vegeta put Kid Trunks through hell and that it was kind of maybe sort of possible for him to reach Super Saiyan at that age depending on what type of training he was doing with Vegeta so yeah there you have it that's 27 <laughs> I'm 
at long last. At number 26, we have Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta. Wow, so bad, so, so bad. If you don't remember his Super Saiyan 4 transformation, which a lot of people don't, he couldn't achieve it by himself, which, you know, that's nothing new for Vegeta. He struggles to catch up to Goku a lot. But in a very, very uncharacteristic way, he proceeds to be artificially turned into a Super Saiyan by Bulma. And, uh... I don't know about y'all, but the Vegeta I know would never take that type of shortcut. So, yeah, nah, that is not it, fam. <laughs> I won't be outdone by anybody. I'll just have to up my own game too. Ah! Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. My power just keeps rising. It's incredible. I gotta say, it's a real privilege to be born a Saiyan! Go on! At number 25, we have Kefla's Super Saiyan 2 transformations. And for the rest of the video, I like every transformation going forward. Now, I know what I just said about Kefla and the Super Saiyan 1 transformation. And you're like, it's the same character Awaken. Why do you like the Super Saiyan 2 transformation over the Super Saiyan 1 transformation? When she transformed into a Super Saiyan 2, it finally opened up what they were trying to do. They were trying to show off some more great Ultra Instinct and be like, yeah, we probably should build up and show how fucking dope this transformation or technique is. I know some people get really pissy about that before we hype it up and, you know, do the whole jeering bout. So, from a strict presentation standpoint, I kind of enjoyed Kefla, you know what I'm saying, getting her little Super Saiyan 2 macho macho power up. But that's pretty much all she has, and that's why I can't really put her any higher than this. It's strictly just making her a powerhouse to have Goku beat her ass. But we do get one of the coolest Kamehameha's in the entire series out of it, so respect the Kefla Super Saiyan 2 transformation is all I'm trying to say. At number 24, this entry falls into a big lot of presentation and not a lot of substance. Well, this and the number 23 entry, if I'm being honest, they have a lot of presentation. Go Tank Super Saiyan 3 transformation. It's a, it's a lot of presentation. It's really, really cool, but it, it doesn't do anything. Go Tanks just doesn't do anything as a character, and honestly, that's my kind of small gripe with Fuse characters. They never do anything despite being hyped up and gassed 24 7 but whatever yeah he yells a lot and he like rips a hole between dimensions maybe i don't really know is the hyperbolic time chamber like a different dimension i don't know whatever super saiyan 3 go tanks eh it's whatever it's cool i guess presentation on point ost on point bruce falconer's a goat all that jazz uh let's go to the next one Number 23, yeah, like I just said, a lot of presentation, not a lot of substance. We have Goku Super Saiyan 3 transformation. Super Saiyan 3 doesn't do like anything. It's the most pointless fan servicey transformation that there probably is. But that being said, I still really like it. The music is on point. Uh, everything about it i like the design besides the no eyebrows thing that's kind of weird but i like the design i like the long flowy hair i like when he was transforming we had the little thing with him like going ape and it was like really him tapping into his sand blood everything about this transformation from goku is on point in my opinion it just doesn't really do or achieve anything so that has it pretty low on the list <laughs> Jumping to Super Saiyan 2 right off the bat, huh? Sure, sounds good to me. 
At number 22, we have Trunks' Super Saiyan 2 transformation. Yeah, you forgot about this, didn't you? This did indeed happen in Dragon Ball Super. When Goku and Trunks are having a little sparring session, Trunks goes Super Saiyan 2. And I kind of enjoyed this moment because it was like, yeah, I guess when the whole Android saga was done, Trunks didn't just like stop evolving and getting stronger obviously he's not on the level of like a Goku or Vegeta but something about knowing Trunks was still evolving and getting stronger as a character I don't know it, it sat right with me it, it sat right with me not so much so to the point of it being any higher than this but it sat right with me <laughs> Number 21, this is probably my first controversial ranking in this video. I have Black Super Saiyan Rose form. This transformation doesn't do all that much for me. I enjoy the presentation a lot, you know what I'm saying? But it feels really like fan fiction y. It feels like a kid was like, I'm gonna give Goku the good one though, blue hair, because that's my favorite color. And I'm going to give the bad Goku pink hair. Yeah, like genuinely this feels like a story or like a presentation or form that I could have came up with when I was 13, no cap. But um, some people really like it. And if you like it, that's cool. I'm not knocking it. It just didn't do all that much for me. They don't even explain to my memory at least why this transformation is a thing like why does he have pink hair why can he go rose can saiyans who haven't been compromised by evil supreme kai's in training can can they also turn their hair pink i don't know i just i just don't feel right putting it any higher than here so it's gonna get this nice 21 spot <laughs> At number 20, we have Vegeta Super Saiyan God Transformation. You may have forgot about this one too. This was in the up-to-date, at least, Dragon Ball Broly movie. Um, I, we've all seen that video, right, of like Vegeta going Super Saiyan God and everyone in the theater getting all hype. Yeah, I was like that at first. And I re-watched the movie for this video. And uh, upon my third time seeing it, I was like, yeah, this was cool, I guess a lot of presentation and pizzazz of course but once you kind of are expecting it, it it's, it's not all that um because it doesn't do anything it's just you know him going through one of the many forms he's gonna go into while fighting broly but that being said still really cool still really dope just not really much in the story or impact department At number 19, we have Vegito's Super Saiyan Transformation. I hope what people don't end up getting out of this video is me just shitting on fused forms. But uh, yeah, nah, it just, it didn't do anything for me. As a kid, it did a lot for me. But as a more older and seasoned person rewatching Dragon Ball, I was like, oh yeah, this did happen, huh? Um, there's not really too much to say about the transformation if I'm being quite honest. It just felt like them being, hmm, the concept of Vegito is already pretty cool. It's already a pretty cool character. Let's make him turn Super Saiyan so we can up that cool by some more. And, you know, that's fine, but just not all that great for me personally. But, I mean, it's like middle of the pack here, right? So that's not bad. Now, I'm, not, I'm not doing it too much of an injustice, you know what I'm saying? Don't sue me. <laughs> At number 18, we have Gogeta's Super Saiyan 1 transformation. Yeah, this happened, you remember? It was in the Broly movie. Before Gogeta goes blue, he actually does like, I want to say half the fight in just regular Super Saiyan form. And it's, uh, it's, it's pretty good, it's pretty good. I personally prefer the fight choreography while Gogeta's in just Super Saiyan form over the fight choreography that proceeds when he goes blue. Just my personal opinion though, um, that doesn't get the form ranked higher or anything like that because Gogeta going blue is still fucking amazing for 
a long list of reasons that I'll get to when I get to that entry but uh yeah it can get it a nice little plug here somewhere close to the middle at number 18 At number 17, we have Goku Super Saiyan 4. Look, my nigga, I'm not even gonna cap. Nostalgia probably has this a couple of places higher than it needs to be, all right? If you have gripe with it being this high, I'm sorry, but I just love me some Super Saiyan 4, man. I, I just love me some Super Saiyan 4. I really, really miss Super Saiyan forms, like, changing the, like, bodily appearance of characters you know what i'm saying not just like changing the color of their hair i really really enjoy super saiyan 3 for you know giving them longer hair and i really really enjoy super saiyan 4 for completely changing saiyan's bodies i don't know i just i just fuck with it i just fuck with it i'm not even gonna try to justify it this video is my opinion i just really fuck with goku's super saiyan 4 transformation At number 16, we have Goku's Super Saiyan Blue transformation. Despite it being higher than Goku's Super Saiyan 4 transformation, I don't have as much praise for it. So like I said in the beginning of the video, I have the rule of using the character's very first time using that transformation in the ranking. And this very specific transformation made me consider completely throwing out that rule. Because the very first time Goku transforms into Super Saiyan Blue, it's just not done any justice whatsoever as it is in as late as the next arc to be completely honest. I have no clue why it was presented like this and obviously it was presented a lot better in the actual Dragon Ball Super Series and not the Resurrection of F movie. But even still using that, I just, I don't know man, it just, it just fell short for me. At number 15, we have Vegeta's Super Saiyan Blue transformation, and still has some of the issues that Goku's does, but upon first seeing this, I was definitely way more hyped than I was for Goku's Blue transformation, just because I was getting the vibe for like a long time there that Vegeta wasn't going to do anything against Frieza, and that would have been extremely disappointing, and it gets higher because like, you know, Vegeta was under the impression that, or not Vegeta, Frieza was under the impression that Vegeta was just leagues behind Goku and it felt really satisfying to see Frieza shit his pants after Vegeta transformed so that's why it gets higher than Goku's Super Saiyan Blue transformation if you're wondering. Don't you dare call us unworthy! Ah! Wait, there's something different about Kavanaugh, isn't there? Once again our young Saiyan fighter is maturing in the heat of battle, my lord. At number 14, we have Kaba Super Saiyan 2 transformation in the Tournament of Power. I feel so bad for Kaba, man, because I feel like Kefla and Kel and Khalifla, like, they're just so underwhelming as characters. And since Kaba has the loose connection of also being a Universe 6 Saiyan, he kind of just gets roped in with them and brung down collectively, and everyone's just like, oh, Universe 6 Saiyan suck. But I actually like really, really enjoyed Kaba. I really enjoyed his role in the series. Now look, you can stake the claim that his Super Saiyan transformations came on too fast and they didn't really feel all that earned, but they felt a lot more earned than his fellow other Universe 6 Saiyans, am I right? I mean, G guys he's not like a main character he's a side character so I really feel like super did 
as much justice as they could with his transformations given the role he had in Super. And this transformation feeling eerily reminiscent of Gohan's Super Saiyan 2 transformation definitely uh, gives it a little bit of a bump up in this ranking. So at number 13, we have Broly's Super Saiyan transformation, and man, never a fan of the original Broly. Never, never a fan. I, I didn't hate him, but my entire life, I've just never been really into like hulking, brooding characters. Like, I, I just don't like them. They're, they're not really my thing. But, ha, huh, Broly's Super Saiyan transformation in the new Broly movie was... It was on point man, that shit was just on point, there's not really too much else to say about it. Presentation, phenomenal, it has a little bit of an unfair advantage compared to newer Saiyan transformations because you know what I'm saying, it had that nice movie budget behind it, but whatever, you know what I'm saying, hey, we all have our advantages and disadvantages in life. It was emotional, granted a little predictable having Pegasus die and then having that be the reason that Broly transformed into a Super Saiyan, I don't really know if I really liked that, it felt really predictable, but still cool, still emotion filled nonetheless, and um, that leads it to get this number 13 spot. If you do anything to my home planet, or anything to my family, I will make you pay! Next we have Kaba's Super Saiyan transformation at number 12 and just reiterating all the things I said about Kaba a couple entries ago, I just don't like the fact that he gets roped in with other Universe 6 Saiyans man, that sucks so much. This was such a dope moment, not only for him, but for like Vegeta. And you know, Dragon Ball doesn't really explore its side stories or anything like that, so I'm not gonna gas it up and pretend like, ooh, this great mentor and mentee story may roll out because chances are that shit's not gonna happen. But if it did, this was a great tease for it. I really, really, really enjoyed Kaba turning into a Super Saiyan, and it felt like authentic while short and very inconcise moment it felt authentic you know what i'm saying no tingling in the back or anything like that it felt like kaba really believed what vegeta was saying to him and he really amped it up and felt like no i'm gonna protect my world and my planet and my universe and that was dope i really enjoyed kaba's super saiyan 1 transformation which leads it to the number 12 spot we're a merged fighter the combination of vegeta and kakarot vegeta and here's something new. Vegito! Yeah! At number 11, just missing out on the top 10. See guys, you know what I'm saying? This isn't strictly me shitting on fused characters. Just missing out on the top 10, we have Vegito Super Saiyan Blue. Now, why do I enjoy Vegito Super Saiyan Blue transformation so much more than Vegito Super Saiyan transformation? To be completely honest with you, I never thought that they fuse again. It was like a good creative writing to get, you know what I'm saying, to evoke some emotion out of the audience. It still has the problem I have with virtually every single fuse character besides Gogeta in that he doesn't do anything. He doesn't win the fight or anything like that. But, you know what I'm saying, whatever, that's fine. It's still cool, still good presentation, you know what I'm saying. Him doing his iconic, it was a nice little feel good moment, you know what I'm saying, and uh, I, semi appreciate the transformation itself even if I'm not the biggest fan of Vegito as a character. Next we have Gogeta, Super Saiyan Blue transformation, and again, having the same perks, he got that fat movie budget behind him, man, so of course the presentation is going to be on point, they had that that cool, like, interdimensional thing, and we got the little CGI fight, shit, mwah, mwah, that shit was glorious, bro, that shit was glorious, bro, great in the presentation department, 
Granted, he doesn't like kill Broly or anything, but we still don't count it as like a win for Gogeta. So dope transformation. Probably, in my opinion, the best blue transformation. I know that can be like a hot take, but yeah, dope, dope. I have to be strong! If I can't do this, then Dad, Krillin, everyone! I'm going to lose them all! <laughs> My son is a super saiyan. At number 9, we have the first time that Gohan went super saiyan in the hyperbolic time chamber. Now, this is something that I was kind of hesitant to put towards the top because Depending on what type of fan you are and what you look for in transformations, this is something that you're probably looking at me like, why the hell do you have this so high? And we're really getting into like the meat and potatoes in that how important transformations are for characters at like this 9 to 1 spot. This finally signaled Gohan kind of stepping forward into all this quote-unquote limitless potential we've been seeing for the entire series. It, it, it gives me chills every time I see it. Goku's reaction to it is on point. It's just all glorious and it's the first little seed playing this in. Wow, Gohan may have a pretty important role in Dragon Ball going forward. And he doesn't, you know what I'm saying, after the Cell Saga, but we don't know that, you know what I'm saying, in the moment when you very first see it for the first time in the series, you don't know that, so I'm not going to use that to knock points off. Yeah, Gohan Super Saiyan 1 Transformation, it's here, number 9, let's go. <laughs> Red, at least you're stronger than your son was against Cell. <laughs> So I'm going to be kind of weird and cheat here because these two spots are like interchangeable depending on who you are like they I literally have them like on the same playing field they're dead even they just have to be considered separate spots. We have Goku Super Saiyan 2 transformation and Vegeta Super Saiyan 2 transformation. They don't really get like highlighted all that much but when the transformations first happen we're getting that long long awaited. Goku versus Vegeta round two, you know what I'm saying? So while the transformations themselves aren't really that dope in the presentation department, the impact and importance they have on the story in this particular fight that we've literally been waiting to see again since damn near the beginning of the series, oh yeah. They had to get in the top 10, bro. They had to. But again, though, they're interchangeable. I have Goku at 8, Vegeta at 7, but you can have Vegeta at 8 and Goku at 7. You can do whatever you want. They're dead set, even in my opinion. Just neither one of them can go past this point. But, uh, yeah, that's 8 and 7. <laughs> Number six, we have Goku Super Saiyan God transformation. Now, wait, I know what you're thinking. I have hold a lot of transformations on this list for not winning fights, not being super significant in the grand scheme of Dragon Ball. I hear you, I hear you. But bro, this was the first bit of Dragon Ball we had gotten in like a decade. Like, I, you can't underrate that. You can't undervalue that. Remember, we hadn't gotten Dragon Ball in years at this point. So for them to come around and do this transformation and it feel unique with the whole Super Saiyan God lore that I kind of wish had more to it, it was dope. It was dope, man. Especially the more supers interpretation of it. That presentation was a whole lot better than the uh, Battle of Gods presentation of it. But they were still pretty good. And it led to a dope-ass fight with Beerus, bro. Beerus, my boy. So, come on now, fam. We gonna, we gonna give Super Saiyan God, Goku Super Saiyan God, at least. That's this number six spot. Now shatter through my limits in my own way, on my own terms. And then, Jiren, I will defeat you! Yeah! 
At number 5, we have Vegeta's Super Saiyan Blue Evolved Transformation. Now, I know this is kind of me breaking my in betweener rule where I said I wasn't going to do ascendant forms and all that, and it's the reason, in case you're wondering, no Trunks's future Trunks's Super Saiyan Rage thing or whatever when he gets the Spirit Sword. No, no that, that's not here. That's not going to be here because that falls into one of those weird tweener transformations, in my opinion. But Super Saiyan Blue Evolved from Vegeta definitely, definitely had to make the ranking. And that's simply because the quality of it is way too high. It checks all my criteria boxes and it just would have been dumb to leave it off. I would have left it off if I felt like it wouldn't have ranked that high, but as you can see, it's number 5 out of 32. So I just wouldn't have felt right to leave it off. We're seeing Vegeta finally finally get over something that he's literally been dealing with since we saw him on Namek and that's him carving his own path and getting power in his own way trying to snatch away from the footsteps of Goku and do his own thing man be unique you're your own character you're not just B team the Goku Vegeta you're a legendary character in your own right bro eat up from the music to the look, the aura, just everything in this moment is amazing. His fight with Topo is just, it's all, it's all just there, man. It's all just there in full swing. This is what Dragon Ball transformations are truly about and has the same energy that all these five spots are going to get. But what will be number one? <laughs> And number four, we have the OG OG Goku's Super Saiyan transformation on Namek. Now, look, there have been a, a lot of transformations since this transformation way back when, as you've seen with this video. But sometimes, man, it's just hard to outdo the original. It's just hard sometimes, man. You know what I'm saying? It's just hard. You guys know the story. For dozens and dozens of episodes, we've been hearing Vegeta obsessed over being a Super Saiyan, yada, yada, yada. And finally, finally, we get that big emotional pop from Goku when he finally does what we've been hearing about forever, what we thought we'd never see. We see the legendary Super Saiyan, and everyone just shits their pants, and it's just a beautiful moment man beautiful moment it's one of the more popular moments in all of dragon ball history for a reason not him too you know who joined the super saiyan club at number three, we have Vegeta's Super Saiyan transformation. I just realized that I've been kind of biased towards Vegeta in this video, but my man deserves it. Vegeta deserves some love over Goku somewhere, and since he's not going to get it in the anime or the manga, I'm going to give it to him here. Vegeta's Super Saiyan transformation is like, in my opinion, just more feel good than Goku's. Goku's is feel good because it's going to be the thing that helps him pivot and overcome Frieza, and that's still great within all rights. But Vegeta is someone who was specifically trying to achieve this transformation and for him to just come along and finally do it in this fashion, glorious, glorious. I still get chills from it, still get chills. Actually, I still get chills from all the top three transformations on this list. Just, just glorious. Shout out to Vegeta, man. <laughs> At number two, we have Trunks's Super Saiyan Transformation. Wow, so grim, so bleak, writing immaculate. History of Trunks is the best special in all of Dragon Ball. Don't at me. And it has nothing to do with the fact that it's canon and everything to do with the fact that History of Trunks does everything that Dragon Ball haters complains about. The consequences are intense, the power-ups don't feel like they are out of nowhere, and if you remember how the history of Trunks ends, that, you know what, 
one day I'll make a video fully exploring the history of trunks. I don't really want to make this video any longer than it already is because it's like 30 minutes. But goddamn, man. The only transformation that makes me genuinely sad out of all the Dragon Ball transformations I've ever seen, it's truly bittersweet seeing my main man Gohan, who's my favorite character if you didn't know, just lying there lifeless and seeing Trunks just completely lose it and even after him losing it, he's still not strong enough to overcome what's caused him all this pain and what's caused the world all this pain. Gorgeous transformation the second best transformation in all of Dragon Ball if you ask me and now we get to the number one spot the best transformation in my opinion in all of Dragon Ball here we go <laughs> Fights with Reddits, Garlic Jr., the Ginyu Force, and even Frieza. We've caught glimpses of the child's explosive power. But like an explosion, it always vanished with the moment. It couldn't be controlled until now. At last, the beastly power has been harnessed. Gohan has awoken. Gohan's Super Saiyan 2 transformation against Cell. What else was going to be in the number one spot? What else? What else? Don't answer that, it's a rhetorical question and your list can be completely different from mine, alright? You could literally have Tefla Super Saiyan 1 as your best transformation. I, I don't really give a damn, but don't answer that, alright? It's not meant to be answered. The longest and most satisfying end of a character arc in all of Dragon Ball just unfolded from one episode to the next, to the next, to the next, right in front of our eyes. I think the reason there are a lot of so many people deeply connected with Gohan is because we literally grew up with him, man. We grew up with him as a character, from him being a kid and headbutting Radix to him getting powered up by Guru and just, just all the moments, man. All the moments, the fight with Frieza, all culminating to this right here when Gohan finally snaps and then oh my gosh and then the sequence of the narrator I gotta find out who's the narrator for Dragon Ball Z because he, he deserves some flowers man the narrator saying the time has finally come the moment we've been waiting for Gohan's power is finally unleashed it's all there it's goosebumps I'm getting goosebumps literally just talking about it and I'm not even looking at it right now I'm literally just looking at audacity and I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it I'm excited to edit in this portion of the video Gohan Super Saiyan 2 transformation is without a doubt in my mind the greatest transformation in all of Dragon Ball period and that's the end of the video if you just sat here and watched me talk about Dragon Ball transformations for what is this 30 minutes 30 plus minutes bro, please subscribe you clearly like the content man come on bro just, just subscribe bro or bare minimum leave me a little like leave me a little comment saying which character i forgot because i'm sure there's a transformation that i probably forgot that i'm not thinking about that i won't remember until i upload the video and then just hopefully no one will call me out on it so or leave your own list leave what you felt's the best transformation in all of dragon ball i don't know um this video is gonna take a hell of a lot of work hell of a lot hell of a lot of work so if you are one of the people who managed to make it to the very end i appreciate you more than you will ever no, I make videos of this quality or better all the time. I'm out.